March of 22, a semifinal win at Barclays Center in Brooklyn when the Hokies on the way to the ACC title beat Carolina and then beat Duke on Saturday night for the championship. Wes, it's hard to believe that two teams in the conference haven't played against one another for 14 months. Yep. Hokies in black. Couture the first shot of the day, rebounded by Ingram. Carolina, of course, with Davis, Cadeau, Ryan, the three-guard lineup for Hubert Davis. Baycott defended by Kidd. And, of course, the Stanford transfer, Harrison Ingram. Cadeau, here's Ingram against Robbie Barron on the drive. Back for Cadeau, deflected with six to shoot and turned over by Carolina. Pat Driscoll, Ramey Steins, Greg Evans on the whistle today at Smith Center in Chapel Hill. And the Hokie lineup, it's been the one that Mike Young has used the last 11 games featuring Robbie Barron, the Northwestern transfer with Lynn Kidd starting at center, who leads the ACC in field goal percentage. Well, Kidd has been a force on the inside, Wes, but the Hokies got to make threes if they're going to win a game on the road. Here is Collins with six to shoot. He will launch on Cadeau and hit MJ Collins. From Clover, South Carolina, shoots 24% from three and stakes the Hokies to an early three-point lead. I think you're okay with that if you're the Tar Heels and their man-to-man -man defense. Here's Ingram with Barron defending. Checked on Baycott at the post. And now Davis against Virginia Tech's best on-ball defender is Hunter Couture. Cadeau for Baycott, taking away Barron, who was sneaking from the backside. Two turnovers on two possessions. Collins in transition has all five of Virginia Tech's points. That was just a bad pass. A nice job by Barron to get over there. Cadeau working against Padula. Now he'll reroute. Here's Baycott at 18 feet. Davis a three. Back rim miss. And a foul called on Lynn Kidd for the push against Armando Baycott. And of course, Wes, that's going to be a problem for Virginia Tech this entire game. Armando Baycott, obviously one of the top rebounders in the country, and it's just hard to keep him off the offensive boards. And Mike Young wastes no time here. Dan, we talked about this this morning. Malijo Poteet might have a little more value in this game today against Armando Baycott than Lynn Kidd at the post for the Hokies. Uh, certainly defensively. Cadeau standing three. Off the mark, and there is Poteet, who grew up 45 miles away in Reedsville, North Carolina, with the rebound. And Poteet's size, he was able to block Baycott out. Yep. Couture working on Ryan. Padula, and we're going to get a foul called on Couture. That's a moving screen for the grad student from Orlando, second on Virginia Tech. Well, Couture is so important to this team. You really don't want him picking up fouls. And he just never got stopped. He passed the ball. I was like some sort of a back out of the backfield blocking somebody. <laughs> Look at you with the fun football analogies. Huh? Well, we're done with that nonsense now, so we can talk about it. Here's Bake out at the block. Double team coming. Quick ball movement leaves Ryan open for three. Got it. 42nd three of the year for Cormac Ryan. Wes, and I think Cormac's Ryan, Cormac Ryan's ability to shoot the ball is going to be crucial for North Carolina, not only down the stretch, but as they go into the NCAA tournament. Couture on the drive. Tap out Ingram. Here's Davis. Carolina a transition chance for the first time today. Ingram thought about the three. Nice and job by the Hokies to get back. Yep. Here's Barron trying to defend Ingram, who wheels into the lane and will draw Robbie Barron's foul. First on the grad transfer, who's from Richmond. It's the third on Virginia Tech. Well, this is a nice job moving the ball by North Carolina. And if you're going to react, then maybe Cadeau is the guy you get back to a little bit more slowly. You react quickly to him, and he's allowed to make the pass. And that leaves a really good three-point shooter wide open. Harrison Ingram has six double-doubles in ACC play, but he is only a 56% free throw shooter. Now 41 of 73 on the year. Dan, he leads the conference in rebounding in league play. He is number one in defensive rebounds. And you automatically say, well, okay, that makes sense. But he's third in offensive rebounds. 
in ACC play. Well, Wes, if you're going to lead the conference in rebounds, then <laughs> you're going to get them both on the offensive and defensive end. And his free throw shooting, that's the one part of his game, Wes, that has been subpar. He has been outstanding in every other area. Poteet against Baycott rolls back with the left hand, and it bounces away for Ingram. I don't think they're looking for a lot of offense from Poteet. Look at Ingram all the way. A little soft running one-hander from Harrison Ingram. And Armando Baycott helped make that play, Wes, because he sprinted down the middle of the court and drew all the attention of the Hokies' defense. Bill Ford sitting over there in the second row had to like the running one-hander by Ingram to finish transition. Padula off the baseline. Bounces away. Cadeau scoops, and Carolina runs again. Quick ball movement. Ingram another three. Or Ryan, rather, off the Ingram pass. Couldn't knock it in. Boy, great ball movement by North Carolina. And Virginia Tech needs a little bit more of that. Too much dribbling right at the moment for the Hokie. Couture catch and shoot three. Baycott the rebound. Carolina on a 7 0 run. Remember, they got an early five point run from MJ Collins, did Virginia Tech. Here's Davis left open. Barron tried to close, couldn't. Ingram the rebound, resets and scores. And one. Well, Harrison Ingram has had games this year, Dan, where he has kind of outworked the other guy. That time, N.J. Collins commits a foul. Carolina on a 9-0 run. Business checking with no monthly maintenance fee, so you don't chew through your profits. Staying with the carrier long term always comes down to trust. That's why I've stayed with Cincinnati Insurance. I had no idea that I would end up creating a whole new community. I wanted to change an industry that neglected me for so long. I never wanted to settle for anything. Like, I just knew I want to be great. ACC Basketball is presented by Food Lion, the official grocer of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Well, seems appropriate. Today is Michael Jordan's 61st birthday, Dan. Well, show you a couple highlights here. Really makes you feel pretty old. <laughs> when you remember who they were? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Wes, so that's the number hanging up there in the rafters, off, obviously. And there are an inordinate, there is an inordinate number of people here today wearing the jersey number 23. They know, right? 
It's also the NBA All-Star break, so that has brought back a lot of former players. Kobe White is here today, the Chicago Bulls. Harrison Ingram at the line. He's got six, make it seven. Ten-nothing run for Carolina on a three-minute scoring drought for Virginia Tech, who had the game's first five points. Good tour, and here is Collins, who had the five for Virginia Tech. He'll fire on Seth Trimble and hit. Good thing MJ. they brought him. Yeah, getting ready to say. Michael Anthony Jerome Collins Jr. MJ has all seven of the hokey points. Here's Jalen Withers, who's in the ball game against the former Tar Heel Tyler Nickel, and Withers scores. West, the Hokies, their defensive ranks in the ACC are not very high, so they, they really have to score points to stay in this game. Nickel has a three rattle around and drop in. He was three for four the other night from behind the line. He's had three double figures in his last five for Mike Young's team. It's just taken him a while to get going, Wes. He scored 2,500 points in high school, yep. so he can put it in the basket. Baycott right hand fell off. Tap follow Withers and Poteet collects. And then the ball got knocked away, and Baycott comes away with it. I think that was Withers that knocked it away, Wes. Boy, that's tough. North Carolina is so good on the offensive boards. When you finally get one, you don't want to give it away. Boy, look at Trimble draw the foul. That is two on Poteet if it is the second. And we mentioned the sophomore Tyler Nickel a year ago at Carolina played 15 games in the conference. Average two points, shot 22%. The all-time leading scorer in Virginia High School League history, as Dan told you. Now, for the trivia folks involved in programs, it is believed today Tyler Nickel becomes the first player to start his career at Chapel Hill and then leave for another school and return to play Carolina in Chapel Hill. Now, we could go back to prior to World War II when Guys moved around institutions before long before we ever knew what transfer portal meant. Man. <laughs> um, but, but we're not going to do we're that. We're not going to do that. We're just going to tell you that it is believed Tyler Nickel is the first player to play at Carolina at the start of his career to then return to play Carolina in Chapel Hill. Trimble hits the free throw. Well, By the way, a... that was the second foul on Poteet. So Melijah comes out of the ball game. And Lynn Kidd's return. Wes and Virginia Tech was fearful of this, too, because North Carolina really gets the ball inside. And that's there's some potential for foul trouble when you're trying to defend Baycott. Yep. So here's a little backcourt pressure offered. Carolina by four, and that'll be a bump on R.J. Davis as Couture was trying to make the catch. But it looked like Davis decided he could get the ball, Wes, and then changed his mind at yeah. the last minute. Dan, it, quite a difference for Carolina to get Trimble back in the lineup, too. He missed a couple of games with an upper body injury, and you saw just how valuable his 17 and a half minutes are per game in conference play, I thought. Wes, he's always been noted for his defensive ability, and that's one of the places where the Tar Heels have struggled after their 10 game winning streak. Padula. Now, here is Nickel, a catch and shoot three. Sure. Tyler Nichols got six. And now all of a sudden Virginia Tech has found their outside threat beyond MJ Collins. Only got a score outside of Collins is nickel. Hokey fans might not have been able to wager that coming into the ball game. And the tour is going to pick up his second foul. Yep. And that's on the Dan, take us through. That's the silo, right? Because the cylinder. The cylinder, the cylinder, rather. I'm sorry. And Wes, everybody's got their space. And if you stand on the basketball court and you have a basketball in your hands in front of you and your hand and your elbows that are a 90 degree angle you have a cylinder that goes up and down to the ceiling and the defensive player cannot get in that cylinder it goes from uh, that basketball in front of you all the way around your back and the defensive player cannot get in that cylinder and make contact and if there is contact it's an automatic defensive foul six foul on virginia tech here's cado on a kick out for ryan three ball good Cormac Ryan now, a pair of threes. He hit four the other night at Syracuse. Previous four games to that, he was seven of his last 26. But he was four of nine the other night at the Dome in Central New York in the seven-point loss to the Orange. Kid working against Washington. 
He'll turn with the left hand, and now Lynn Kidd gets his first basket of the game. First guy other than Nickel and Collins to score for the Hokies. Kidd has been good inside all year long, and if you're going to let him play one on one that close to the basket, he's going. He might score a lot of points. Ingram backing down Nickel now. He'll turn with the right hand. Couldn't finish it. Slapped it out. Ryan quickly to Cadeau, standing three. It's a short three. Hit the front rim. And Jaden Young got the rebound and draws Ingram's foul. It'll be the second on Ingram. Second on Carolina. It's the first on Harrison Ingram. Well, North Carolina really doing a great job at penetrating into the defense, making the defense collapse. And then Ryan, again, we talked about the fact that he has not shot the ball well as well as he had hoped at the start of the season. But he's come on lately, and that's a very good sign for North Carolina. Padula. Young standing three from the front. Long rebound for Ryan. Young hadn't played that many minutes in ACC play West. He's only now one for five in conference play. Inside Washington to catch off the Ryan feed for the punch. <laughs> That's what happens when you make a couple of threes, West. The defense comes running out on you. Jalen Washington averages three and three against the league. Kids spinning into traffic back with the left hand. Ingram clears. Cadeau across for Trimble. Couldn't get by Young. Now tried to slide baseline. Look at Ingram out of the corner. Harrison Ingram 42% on the year from behind the line coming in. Tar Heels have been very aggressive defensively against the ball, Wes. It's really hard for the Hokies to get any penetration. And that's a walking violation. Yep. Travel will award it to the Tar Heels. Third turnover by Virginia Tech. Jalen Washington comes in. Good look from Cormac Ryan. Carolina a four point advantage. We want it all. We want beards and lattes. Great. No. We want to be invited Great. and not attend. Great. We want to take the shortcut. <laughs> you lost. And not be in danger. Reverse. Sadly, we can't have it all. Except at Sport Clips, where we check in with the pros in men's hair and totally check out with pure, uninterrupted relaxation. Sport Clips. It's a game changer. Out here, you're either lunch or you're enjoying it. The all-powerful Kia SUVs assembled in Georgia. Kia, movement that inspires. Come on in to the Chuck Stop. Everything you need for a road trip to the Final Four. I'm impressed, Chuck. You're gonna need these. And these mud flaps. I can use these. I'm earning double miles with my Capital One Venture card, so it's on me. Well, what up with you and these subs? Man's gotta eat. Here at Papa John's, we know our stuff. We know how to hand stuff our crust with more flavors than anyone else. <laughs> like the garlicky seasoned cheese and our garlic epic stuffed crust pizza. We're talking Papa John's iconic garlic sauce flavor mixed with cheese and stuffed right into the crust of your pizza. <laughs> I mean, no one stuffs the crust like Papa John's. <laughs> Try our garlic epic stuffed crust pizza. Available now only at Papa John's. For Brittany, it's more than a move. It's a new city. It's a new role. It's a brand new horizon that's hers for the taking. It's more than a move, and we're more than a truck.
Tar Heels by four after that Jalen Washington dunk. And you might wonder how in the world could he get so open. Look at the low post where number 13, Jaden Young, he's supposed to stay down there when the Hokies come and jump out on that screen. And he doesn't do it. You watch number 13, he follows Harrison Ingram up out of the lane. He's got to be down in the lane to prevent an easy pass like that to Washington. We said Young doesn't really play that many minutes, and he just got lost in a defensive assignment. And you see Mike Young across the way at the Virginia Tech bench talking with his staff because that was a point of emphasis today, Dan, in their walkthrough this morning. That and how would you go through the switches on the perimeter, and what a drive and score by Cadeau. Carolina pushes the lead to six now, almost nine minutes in, their largest of this first half. Well, Cadeau is a guy that's not a great three-point shooter, but boy, he can really get past you and get into the lane. Padula trying to wire around Cadeau. What a scoop and score for <laughs> Sean Padula. That is a typical Sean Padula shot. He just puts his head down and goes. And the Hokies need to get some offense from somewhere. Couture's on the bench with those two fouls. Tremble. Boy, Ryan, Ryan wanted the ball. Ran to the corner with both arms in the air. And there's Nickel drawing the foul. Dan Carolina. Am I wrong in saying Carolina is able to draw a lot of fouls by working their way to the basket. They, they get really good ball and player movement, Wes. So when you move the defense around, now suddenly you can attack and you're going to force some fouls. And North Carolina, in ACC play, they've made more free throws than any other team. And it's not even really that close. So here's Cormac Ryan from New York City. 86% at the line and the front end good. Don't forget. This is game one of a triple header on ACC Network. We'll send you next to Chestnut Hill. John Mita Burrell, Malcolm Huckabee standing by from Miami and Boston College. And then Louisville is off to Peterson Events Center tonight, second meeting of the year. Doug Sherman, Josh Pastner are there for the Cards and the Panthers. All here on ACC Network and always available on the ESPN app. West and already North Carolina's aggressiveness have forced so many fouls on Virginia Tech. They're in the bonus, and there's 10 minutes left in this half. And Carolina is a 74% free throw shooting team in conference play. That is sixth best. And here's Padula against Trimble, trying to find an alley again, and that got blocked out of there, and Randy Steins is going to call Seth Trimble for the foul. A nominee falls Wisconsin sophomores first third on the Tar Heels and here is Sean Padula as Dan Bonner said a swashbuckler if there ever was one in the ACC. Well Wes Virginia Tech is really getting very little ball movement Padula has just been putting his head down and driving to the basket now he's getting to the line for two and he made 14 to 16 in the last game so he is a good free throw shooter but the Hokies. They've really got to get some ball movement. You just can't have one guy dribble. Well, here comes Couture, Collins, Brandon Reckstein are going to wait at the table, and seven foot freshman redshirt Patrick Wessler from Matthews, North Carolina, wears jersey number five for Virginia Tech. He's going to play for the first time since one minute against Georgia Tech five games ago. And Padula hits the back end. That'll allow Recksteiner to get in the lineup. Freshman from Ackworth, Georgia who averages about seven minutes a game in conference play. Well, Wessler is obviously in the game because of the foul problems inside. Yep. And he's in there, and we're looking for any scoring from him. He's just going to try to contain Baycock. Yep. And there's the bounce pass to Armando now. And on cue, he'll wrap around Wessler and score. And that's First easy. basket for Armando Baycott. And containing Armando Baycott is easier said than done. Here is Rex Steiner for Nickel. Remember, Nickel plays with a foul. Couture on the foul on the floor with two fouls. Collins gave them their first five points and misses for the first time. North Carolina has been very good defensively so far, Wes, and very aggressive on the offensive end. Baycott is two for two over the top of Patrick Wessler. Boy, he saw Wessler come off the bench and his eyes lit up. That's a great job by North Carolina to go right at the inexperienced player on the inside. Nine point lead Carolina's largest. Couture bounces for Nichols three and Ingram another rebound. Ryan thought about it 
He'll drive, hang on Rex Steiner, fell off the rim. Look at Ingram go get it and dunk it. Ingram's got nine points, eight rebounds in the game's first 11 minutes. The lead is 11 at Smith Center in Chapel Hill. Buyers. Arby's crispy fish sandwiches still don't fit on the bun. Arby's sincerely apologizes for continuing to make big old sandwiches. Arby's, we have... 11-point lead for Carolina, and you said when Wessler stepped on the floor, it's almost like Carolina wanted to get the ball to number five. Wow, Wessler's seven feet tall, Wes. He's a big, strong kid. But he's only played a total of five minutes prior to this game in ACC action. And Armando Baycott is one of the most experienced post players in the country. He knows exactly what he wants to do. The Tar Heels have made four of their last five shots, mainly because they've gotten good shots. They have continued to be aggressive. And Virginia Tech, again, their defense wasn't going to win this game. They have to be able to score, and they just haven't been able to get a clean look. Hokies are 7 of 16 from the floor. Carolina 10 of 20. As we played about 11 minutes. The pressure on the ball has limited what the Hokies have been able to do offensively. Yeah. Kid one dribble. Here's Couture. Rex Steiner from in front of the Carolina bench. And over 40% of Virginia Tech's offense or field goal attempts come from three, but that was a real long one. Here's Collins blocked behind by Withers. Kid recovers for the Hokies, and then a foul called on a Tar Heel reach by Pat Driscoll against Armando Baycott. Well, Kid, he looked back. He knew <laughs> that Withers was coming, and a really nice job by Lynn Kidd to get the rebound, but that's a clean block. And it's good patience by Kidd. He didn't panic in there. He was surrounded, but he kept his pivot foot, and as a result, draws the foul. Rex Steiner out. Wessler's out. Lynn Kidd with the one foul. Remember, Poteet has two, and here's Padula driving and scoring off the jump stop. You don't see the jump stop much anymore. <laughs> no, you don't. But Sean Padula's got it. Nine-point lead. Baycott picked up on his dribble. He's got to get rid of Boy, Collins doing a nice job with Davis. Back to Baycott. A little scoop. And tap follow of his own miss. Boy, another, nice for offensive, Baycott. another offensive rebound. Yep. The lead returns to 11. Nickel on the drive. Wouldn't go. Tap follow. Kid, no. Over offensive foul over the back on Lynn Kidd. Dan, that'll be his second. Eight on the Hokies. So now both of the principal bigs for Virginia Tech have two each. This spring is the perfect time to get away with a great deal on your favorite Hyundai model. All backed by America's best warranty, plus three years or 36,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. Add more joy to your journey at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Get in and get away now before these deals are gone. Get 0% APR or up to 1,500 bonus cash on the Hyundai Tucson. Hurry, offers end 229. The rush to the playoffs. The biggest games. The biggest stage. The Stanley Cup Final returns on ABC and ESPN+. True story. When two cats enter the jungle, it's going to get wild. It's the Wildcats and the Tigers. Only one will escape with a W. Experience number 22, Kentucky. Number 13, Auburn. Tonight at 6 on ESPN. Get ready for the rush to the playoffs. The biggest games on the biggest stage. An outdoor hockey doubleheader at MetLife Stadium. The most intense playoffs in sports begin in April and culminate with the most revered trophy of all. 
The Stanley Cup Final returns to ABC and ESPN Plus this June. The competition's never been better. I would never let a woman do that. The stars have never been brighter. He's on the Kelly. Oh, that was pretty. It was Amor magic. Some ruin tonight. There's no stopping us now. This is just spectacular. That's our move. Women's College Hoops on ESPN and ABC. The most passion, the most intensity. This is the way basketball's supposed to be. Taking the tour. The competition's never been better. This is just spectacular. The stars have never been brighter. That's our move. Women's College Hoops on ESPN. The ACC's Committee for Racial and Social Justice in conjunction with its member institutions have identified February 17th through the 25th as ACC Unity Week. And we welcome you back to Chapel Hill, North Carolina leading Virginia Tech by 11. And we'll get free throws coming here for R.J. Davis after the foul on Lynn Kidd sent us to the timeout, Dan. So Petit back on the floor with the two. And here is Davis at the line, number two free throw shooter in the ACC at 91%. And Armando Baycott's recent play, Dan, takes us to the top five career rebounders now in ACC history. And boy, the great Ron Shavlin, old number 84 <laughs> for the Wolfpack, is next on the list. Wes, here again, Virginia Tech's able to get a defensive rebound. But that ball got tipped away from Hunter Nickel. The Hokies have just not been very tough with the basketball. Didn't get a reset of the shot clock, says Greg Evans. So while they look at the clock, we're reminded to you that UNC softball squares off against number six Washington. The Shriners Children's Clearwater Invitational is underway. Starts at 9.30 Eastern tomorrow morning here on ACC Network. It's almost like the official opening. The best softball programs in the country are in Florida this week for the Shriners Children's Clearwater Invitational. We got full coverage on the ESPN family of networks. Here is Cadeau, the drive and scoop with the left hand. Second field goal for Cadeau. Boy, the Tar Heels about able to do anything they want on the offensive end, Wes. Padula working off a potite screen fall away against Cadeau and they're going to call a foul on Elliot Cadeau. It'll be his first. It's five on Carolina. Padula is a guy that can really put a lot of pressure on you and he has that step back jumper and the foul didn't occur on that first bump. It occurred because Cadeau didn't give room to come down. Yep. You are a shooter until you come down on the floor and the defensive player can't hit you while you're still in the air. And Padula misses the front end. He has five in this first half. Ingram is back. Withers is out. Hubert Davis said something yesterday, Dan, about being present on the ball defensively. Felt like Carolina might have come out of their groove a little bit in that particular defensive discipline. I think that's been pretty good here in the first, what, 13 minutes of the game today? It has been very good. And there's Elliot Cadeau doing a nice job driving to the basket again. But, Wes, the other day they were playing against Judah Mintz and J.J. Starling. And those, those are two guys who can put pressure on any defense. Ingram, a kickback three from Cadeau. Bounds away for Couture. 13-point lead for Carolina, under seven to go. What the third year coach of the Tar Heels doesn't want though is his team to relax. Yes, absolutely. Couture rolls nicely off the screen, feeds Poteet on the roll in the basket. First points for Melijal Poteet. And a travel 
in the backcourt. An unforced error on Carolina is their fourth. Wes, I wouldn't call that unforced. Sean Padula came flying in there and totally surprised Cadeau. I thought he was going to get the ball, but that's the way Padula plays. Mike Young said about him, he's all gas. That boy has no brakes. Ooh. And that's, uh, I mean, that's a direct quote from his coach, and it is true. Barron on the floor. Remember, he's got a foul as well. Here's Potita again and one. Elijah Potit, whole different, whole different character from his first rotation off Mike Young's bench here. Well, they threw the ball inside to him, and this is a very difficult play. He's a little bit off balance, so is Baycott, but Potit recovers his balance first and is able to score and draw the foul against Baycott. And the first Tar Heel with two is Armando Baycott. And he goes to the Tar Heel bench, and here is Jalen Washington back out there as Poteet knocks down the free throw. Five for Elijah Poteet. Carolina's lead cut down to eight now. It's been hard for the Hokies to get stops, Wes, but they can sure use one here. Ryan thought about it, and then he tried to dump it for Ingram, and Barron got a hand in. Out of six minutes to go. Davis. Paxson Wojcik on the floor. He wears number eight. Now six to shoot. Here's R.J. Davis to work. Step back over Collins for three. Bounds away. Cormac Ryan the rebound. Right back at him. Can't finish. Washington does. Wes, that's now eight offensive rebounds in the game. And two dunks for Jalen Washington. And the Virginia Tech defense for the first shot has not been too bad. They just can't get a defensive rebound. Collins knocks down a triple. Ten first half points now for MJ Collins, his fifth double figure game against the ACC. Wesson, you mentioned it earlier, he shoots under 30% from out there, so those are two really big shots. Ryan all the way through. Padula rebound. Seven-point game. Here's Padula again. Contact couldn't bank it home. Here's Ingram leading a three-on-two, and Davis races in. Wes, that was a tough shot by Padula. And when you take a tough shot, that really puts your defense at a disadvantage. That allowed North Carolina to get out and go. First field goal for R.J. Davis. He's got three. The lead is nine again. Tells you something about the versatility of this Carolina offense today. Ryan forced the turnover. Here's Davis weaving back and blocked by Barron. Davis goes to the floor and a foul on Robbie Barron will be his second. Nine now on Virginia Tech. North Carolina doing a great job, Wes, getting out and really putting some pressure on that Virginia Tech defense. And Barron, you know, he blocks the shot. <laughs> Down low, he got all of R.J. Davis. R.J. Davis, one of two at the line, a rare miss a moment ago. He's 88% from the line in conference play. He leads the league in ACC play, though, in made threes per game. That's four now. He missed all three of his three-point attempts today. Yep. So Nickel is in, Barron is out for Mike Young. The fifth year head coach of Virginia Tech, who's done just a marvelous job after a splendid job at Wofford for many, many years. And there's the Radford, Virginia native, whose late father Bob was a fixture when he came back to Blacksburg in the New River Valley to be the Hokie head coach. This is a very important four and a half minute stretch for Virginia Tech. Collins, Poteet, now Padula. And here's Poteet going to work with Washington defending him. Elijah Poteet's got seven. Encouraging sign for Mike Young. They're getting some productivity from their post in Poteet's presence here. Uh, and they, they really do need some productivity down on the inside. And there's Davis. There's a floater and scores. R.J. Davis now has seven. 
Seems like they've all come in bunches here, doesn't it? Absolutely. Right side, Couture. Oh, boy. Now you get the former MVP of the tournament warmed up. First points for Hunter Couture. A deep three from in front of the Tar Heel bench. And that was against really good defense. Ryan was all over him. But Couture is a guy who can make shots. Absolutely. Here's Ingram spinning on nickel. Scores. Harrison Ingram now. He's got 11 and a half by my count. And he's also worked his way to a double-double. 11 <laughs> points and 10 rebounds in the first half. On the drive, kick to the corner. Nickel standing three, bangs it home. Nine for Tyler Nickel on three threes. And Hubert Davis says, hold up. We had this thing going along like we needed. And then all of a sudden, Couture knocks down a three. R.J. Davis, our second running one-hander of the first half, by the way. And then Tyler Nickel, a third three in this first half. Seven-point game when we come back. We want it all. We want beards and lattes. Great. Oh. We want to be invited Great. and not attend. Great. We want to take the shortcut. <laughs> you lost. And not be in danger. Reverse. Sadly, we can't have it all. Except at Sport Clips, where we check in with the pros in men's hair and totally check out with pure, uninterrupted relaxation. Sport Clips. It's a game changer. You found the right model. For sure. Now, how can you be sure you're getting the right deal? I have to talk to my bestie. Hey, girl. This one's like your last boyfriend. It's got issues. Let's ask the experts. For the right used car, just say, show me the Carfax value. You'll get the most accurate price based on the vehicle's accident history. Look for me and stop overpaying. Shop at the all-new Carfax.com. The most passion, the most intensity. This is the way basketball is supposed to be. The rush to the playoffs, the biggest games, the biggest stage. The Stanley Cup Final returns on ABC and ESPN+. Plus. This time belongs to those who want it most. The rivals. The statement makers. 70 points. 70? You want that shot? Oh, he puts it in! Take it. That stop, make it. This time is where youth is tested and greats are challenged. The playoff push is coming. The time is now. Well, here's our game summary. Harrison Ingram's already got the double-double, Dan. It's his ninth of the year and the 14th of his career here in this first half. Hunter Couture had his first points a moment ago. You see the three-point shooting, you see the free throws, and Hubert Davis was not shy about taking that timeout a moment ago. No, he wasn't. He didn't like the sudden turn in the game as Virginia Tech knocked down a couple of threes. And Wes Hunter Couture, he did miss some time because he picked up those two personal fouls. Right. But Cormac Ryan has been all over him defensively. Yep. And in addition, Ryan has eight points. You saw the Tar Heels only two for ten shooting threes. Both of those threes coming off the hand of Cormac Ryan. Carolina's also got 40 or more in the first half in their third straight ball game. So nobody said the offense has been the issue, right? Here's Ryan. Try another one. Bounces away. And we're going to get a Jalen Washington foul against MJ Collins, I believe. Yep. Sophomore at 6'10 from Gary, Indiana. That'll be the seventh on Carolina. So one and one with 2.51 to play, I believe. And MJ Collins, I think, will shoot the free throws. So let's see, Jaden Young or MJ Collins? Uh, the officials are saying it's Collins, although now they saw the signal two, but I guess it's going to be Jaden Young. Jaden Young is two for two at the free throw line. He played 12 minutes the other night against Florida State. 
Dan, it was his first double figure minutes action of the year in conference play. Don't forget the ACC Huddle's got their NFL Draft introduction show coming up Monday night, 8 o'clock. Position by position, look at the ACC players who could get their name called in Detroit in late April. Kelsey Riggs with Field Yates, Jordan Reed, and Matt Miller. Part of our coverage here on ACC Network. Wes, don't look now, but this is a five-point ball game. Yep. So Young gets the free throws. He played for the great Freddie Johnson at Greensboro Day School, by the way, the all-time winningest coach in North Carolina high school history. Here is Ingram going to work on Nickel. Harrison blocked by Nickel out of there. Boy, that's a heck of a defense. Sure is. Play. Terrific play by Nickel. Ahead, here's Padula. Back for Collins, and he misses on the three, and Ingram grabs yet another rebound. Uh, he, this is late in the season, and he shoots under 30% from out there west. The averages are going to catch up with him eventually. Washington. Here's Ryan. Petit trying to help. Now Ingram thought about it. Back for Corman. Tend to shoot with R.J. Davis. Hokies tried to force the double. Here goes Davis on the drive and pushed it up, and it spun out. Look at this third try. Ingram slapped it out, volleyball style. Another offensive rebound. R.J. Davis. Trimble all the way through. Tried to scoop it up. It hit Davis after Nickel blocked it. It'll go to Virginia Tech. We're talking about how the Hokies needed stops. Well, <laughs> Tyler Nickel with two block shots has provided them with stops. Cadeau has come in the ball game. Ryan out, so you have Cadeau, Davis, and Trimble. Couture's going out. Jaden Young is coming back for Virginia Tech. Poteet is out. But those are guys with two fouls, Wes. Right. There's a minute and 40 seconds left in the half, 47 left in the half. So they're just trying to save their guys, but they've taken away a little offense. Wessler has checked back in. Padula for Jaden Young's three. And Cadeau runs it down. And we're going to get a foul on Wessler. Trying to unhinge Washington, who was floating in front, his first. That is 10 now on the Hokies with just under 90 seconds to go in the opening half. I'll tell you what, we're five wide at halftime, by the way. <laughs> Kelsey Riggs, Luke Hancock, Joel Berry, Carlos Boozer, Jim Beheim. That's be a, a lot of folks. That'll be fight to the finish in that studio. The Washington free throw good. Fifth first half point for Jalen Washington. Carolina lead back to six. So now Couture with those two fouls back in. Mm -hmm. Offense for defense there, Dan? Yep, absolutely. Although it took him out on offense before. But they got that wide open three for Young, and I think if they're going to get a wide open three, they want Couture to shoot it. Eight different Tar Heels have marked here in this first half. Six point advantage, Padula. Trying to cut into it again, reverses around. Look at RJ Davis reach in there, knock it away, and then it grazed Padula, Ramey Stein says, on the way out of bounds, so it will go to Carolina. Well, this is really a force by Padula. He draws a couple of guys. You've got to be able to pass the ball, but he'd already left his feet to shoot. Really good defense by North Carolina. Cadeau. R.J. Davis a catch and score. What a great response by North Carolina. Virginia Tech had cut it down to five. Couple of possessions left in this first half at least. Padula winding down again. Pushed it up. Wessler the rebound. Trying to find space. Washington bothered it, knocked it away, and recovered it. Just because you get an offensive rebound, West, doesn't mean you have to shoot it. He was well covered. The play with the good three-point shooters on the floor is to kick it out for a three. So Hubert Davis gets his team in the front court and takes the timeout. Nine-point lead, Chapel Hill. We have breaking news right now, so we wait to see how this plays out. In all my years, I never watched anything like this. You have got to watch this replay, folks. Da, 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 da. Mahomes. What a catch! Hey, you gotta watch this. I'm watching. Oh, oh I'm watching. 
might be done. Now on Sports Center, another wild night. Watch me, watch me do this. Nine point lead for Carolina. Hey, look, you, you're going to get to your script at the top. Padula's played well. <laughs> RJ Davis here a moment ago. Just a tough shot. But it's kind of one we're taking for granted this year, huh? Well, there's really no pressure on him. Nichols steps toward him and then steps back. And you can't step away from him. This guy in conference play has made more three-pointers than anybody. And he, I, he's off to a slow start, but he's got it rolling now. Yep. Eight different Tar Heels in the scoring column. Six-second differential as we wind down this first half. When Padula, you, know, you want to be aggressive, but you don't want to commit a foul in this situation. Ten to go with Cadeau. Seven. There's Cadeau and scored it. Six for the freshman. They just spread it out. Cadeau beat him one on one. Collins will launch at the horn. Banged out of there, recovered and thrown back up by Young. Virginia Tech with the last 306 without a field goal. 39 points and a half, Wes. Uh, generally, you'd be pretty happy with that, but the Hokies gave up 50, the most they've given up in a half all year. Out of the double team, Baycott, Ingram, Ryan. Bounds away on a deep three. Cormack hit his first two, and has now missed his last three. Well, his, I think his biggest contribution today has been his defense against Couture. And Baycott, the steal of a ball intended for Kidd, up the hand of Padula. Six turnover by the Hokies opens their offensive possession of the half. Or Baycock calling for it against Kidd. Armando from the block. There's the double team. Baycott with 12 to shoot. He'll bang in on Kidd, put it up. And there's three on Lynn Kidd. Kidd is trying to have Wes keep his hands straight up in the air, but I thought he brought those arms down against Baycott. So he picks up his third foul. And I think that's hard for any defender. You know, maybe Zach Eady could do that, go up against Armando yeah. Baycott one on one, but I'm not sure there's a lot of people who can manage any better than Kidd just did. Dan, there's some aspects of today's very modern college basketball that have got some old school in them. That's yeah. one of them, it feels like. We're seeing a lot more of one on one isolated post play, it feels like, as we move through this particular season. And Baycott has really helped himself west from the free throw line this year. He's really improved his free throw percentage. So he makes you pay for it when you foul. 82% against the league. Seven points now for Richmond's Armando Baycott. And he hits the back end. Poteet checked in. He wears 34. For Virginia Tech to spell kid in Mike Young's lineup. Couture. Out front, Padula. Long foul line jump shot. Tough shot. Yep, they caught the rebound. Look at Cadeau. All the way into the traffic on the quick dribble. There's a basketball analytic out there called plus minus. And it's used to measure your team's performance when you are on the floor. Plus is good, minus is bad. <laughs> Obviously. Six to shoot for Ingram. Skip for Cadeau. Now for RJ's three from the left wing. Wow! Dynamic ball movement gives RJ Davis 13. And the guy on the court with the biggest grin after that shot was Elliot Cadeau. Here's Barron trying to answer. Cannot. And Poteet gives the Hokies a second chance with a long rebound. And the Hokies are really in a danger zone here, Wes. Look they at could, Padula. They could get blown out. Oh, and it rolled in. How did that go in? Because it came from your man, Sean Padula. <laughs> there's a will, there's a way. Quick pass, Baycott the catch, fell off the front rim, knocked out. Here's the Hokies. Two on two, Padula again challenging, and Ryan swatted it away. Well, let's go back to the crafty ball movement in the half court game here, Dan. Well, the ball went inside, then it went outside, and Cadeau just a great job with the cross court pass. He could see the defense was entirely down on the inside. Generally, you make that pass from the corner all the way across the court. You're asking for somebody to steal it. And some conversation here with Greg Evans and 
Pat Driscoll and crew here. And I'm not quite sure. I don't know what's going on. What's transpired. Melijah Poteet is in the corner where Rashim Zayut oh, is the contact Virginia lens. Tech basketball trainer. Let me finish my thought here real quick on Elliot Cadeau. His plus minus at halftime was 20. Now, like to give you an example, he was the only one in, well, Cormac Ryan was 10. Next closest behind that was nine. Well, Wes, what that means is while you were on the court, your team outscored the other team by whatever, and in Cadeau's situation here, now I think that's what Mike Young is complaining about. The contact lens didn't come out, but had some help from Armando Baycott's hand. Looked like Poteet and Baycott got some hand-to-hand -hand combat going. But in the first half, North Carolina outscored Virginia Tech by 20 when Elliott Cadeau was on the floor. That's it. And 20 west and a half is almost an unheard of number. I'll tell you what. Elijah Poteet finally got the contact lens back in. Long three Couture. Poteet had it, lost it. They scrapped for it. Look at this, and we're going to get a whistle and foul. If that's Poteet, that's his third. If it's nope, Barron, it's, Barron, it's, his, it's third. his third, too. It's just been a rough rebounding day for the Hopers. And Dan, Mike Young knew it was going to be a struggle. It was going to be tough. They are the Hokies, that is. Tenth in the ACC in conference play and rebound margin. Carolina is number one. Here's Paycott on the cut to the basket and offensive foul. Yep. Wes, and that's one of those calls that you rarely see anymore because the defender has to be in position before the offensive player plants that foot. And again, that's a bang bang call that was really close. And he was just outside the restricted area. But if you're going to get a charge, you got to be there early. Padula after Carolina's fifth turnover. And the third on Baycott. Couture with nine to shoot, threw it up, and Ryan will be called for the foul. Cormac Ryan's first, second on Carolina. Tar Heel fans not thrilled with the whistle. But Couture is just looking for the foul here. He turns and he goes right into Cormac Ryan. And Ryan was sort of positioned to the side. Right. So he didn't really have his guarding position established. And I think that's why that foul was called. That's a break for Virginia Tech, though. Fourth point for Couture. Mike Young said in the offseason about Hunter Couture, company man if there ever was one. He said Hunter Couture is a guy whose legacy at Virginia Tech will not be just winning. It'll be what he meant to the program moving 10 years down the road or so. Kick out on the right, Davis. Three bounds away, and Poteet just got his third. Third on Melijah Poteet. So now Kidd, Barron, Poteet, all with three. West well, Virginia Tech's three team fouls here in the second half. When you get great ball movement, and that's what North Carolina has been getting, you force the defense to move. And when the defensive, defensive players have to move around, they're not usually in good position for rebounding. And that's what happened here. They moved the defense around. So when the shot goes up, the Carolina players have a chance to be in pretty good position for the offensive rebounds. And they've claimed a lot of them today. 11 at the half, 12 the difference. Here is Cadeau, and there's another pokey foul. That's on Padula, the junior from Edmond, Oklahoma. It will be his first four on Virginia Tech. And just like in the first half, Wes, the fouls are piling up on the Hokies because the Tar Heels have been extremely aggressive, driving the ball and really fighting on the offensive boards. Cadeau, oh, he lobbed one toward Baycott, who just slings it back to Cadeau. And then it's turned over. That was an interesting sequence. Yep, that's six on Carolina. And that'll be a foul on Ryan. Dribble drive by Padula, second on Cormac Ryan, third on Hubert Davis's club. And here comes Seth Trimble off the Carolina bench. 
And he's going to get Cadeau's spot. Withers and Washington follow. For Hubert Davis here with 16.32 to go. Kind of a wobbly start to the second half here, Dan. Well, a little bit, Wes. But you, I mean, you expected Virginia Tech to come out and really try to get back in the game, and they've done that. They've tried to be aggressive. Unfortunately, they've picked up some fouls. Collins. As we mentioned, the Hokies have struggled to get it inside. There's Kidd in traffic and scores. Lynn Kidd's second field goal of the game. And that's a nice job by the Hokies to get it in there, particularly against the mismatch, although Kidd had to get that one over three players. Davis on the bounce pass. Here's Washington. Wheeling inside. Back strong. Too strong. And out of bounds. And it'll stay with Carolina with 20 to shoot. 16.04 to play. So again, the Hokies cannot claim the defensive rebound. And the guy, West that got his hands on the ball was Washington. And he took an off-balance shot. And yet somehow he was able to get his hands on the ball and create that offensive rebounding opportunity. Yep. Carolina plus nine on the glass. And still holding to a 10-point advantage here. Washington screen. Here's Ingram. Oh, no look to Tremble. Races baseline, feeds Washington. They what if Jalen Washington will stay ready, he'll score. Because <laughs> they will get 13 the ball, huh? Well, he did a nice job finding an open area, but again, great ball movement by North Carolina. Yep. Couture, kid, inside, lowers the shoulder, put it up, score, and draws the foul. Back-to-back -back baskets for Gainesville, Florida's Lynn Kidd. So it's a 12-point lead for the moment. Jalen Washington's dunk cuts it. And then here's the bucket by Kidd to make it 10 as we go to timeout. So how was your day, Liz? Hmm. Just a normal day for us. ProPlan Sport, strength and stamina for life out here. Available at Tractor Supply. The competition's never been better. I would never let a woman do that. The stars have never been brighter. Hey, Rittard, 3,000 career points. Come on, Cameron Brink. Deja Kelly. Oh, that was pretty. Was a more magic. Some ruin tonight. There's no stopping us now. This is just spectacular. That's our move. Women's College Hoops on ESPN and ABC. True story. A trifecta of rivalry games can heat up the winner blues. This is going to be a fight all night long. First, number four, Houston faces number eight, Kansas. There's nowhere better than Allen Fieldhouse, nowhere. Then it's round one of Duke Carolina. The best rivalry in college basketball. And number five, Tennessee takes on number 10, Kentucky. Boy, if that doesn't get you going, I don't know what will. Experience the blockbuster triple header today on ESPN. True story, when two cats enter the jungle, it's going to get wild. It's the Wildcats and the Tigers. Only one will escape the W. Experience number 22, Kentucky, number 13, Auburn. Tonight at 6 on ESPN. The rush to the playoffs. The biggest games. The biggest stage. The Stanley Cup Final returns on ABC and ESPN+. Plus. This time belongs to those who want it most. The rivals. The statement makers. 70 points. 70? You want that shot? Oh, he puts it in! Take it. That stop. What a block! Make it. This time is where youth is tested. And greats are challenged. The playoff push is coming. The time is now. I'm here courtside, watch this. You have got to watch this replay, folks. Watch this, watch this. Oh. Watch me, watch me, watch me, do this. The most passion, the most intensity. This is the way basketball is supposed to be. TV. 
Give her the ball. Are you kidding me? And it's a tie game. He drinks it. I can't believe what I am witnessing. The streak wins. It's it for the win. Ah! Well, get ready. We're going to be in our nation's capital for the New York Live ACC tournament. If the tournament started today, Dan Bonner. Well, it's that time of the year, isn't it, Wes? <laughs> Everybody's talking about the NCAA tournament. Before we get there, we got to get to the ACC tournament. And those first three slots, Wes, we showed you the standings a little earlier. Yep. You know, all those teams are at least two games in front of Wake Forest. But after that, it's sort of a jumble. It's going to be really interesting these last couple of weeks to see how everything plays out. I would offer you that uh, Clemson Wake Forest game on the final day of the regular season. You see the four five scenario there if the double by is in play for that 40 minutes of basketball. My goodness. That's well, going to be a great game anyhow but particularly with those kind of stakes. Seven for Lynn Kidd. He's got five and a half. The Hokies are back to within nine. Almost five minutes old here in this 90th meeting between the two schools. But first in 15 months. Turned over, number seven on Carolina. Tar Heels have given it away twice in their last three possessions. Tyler Nickel on the floor, short jumper good. 11 for Nickel, seventh double figure game against the conference this year. And that's, again, that's a shot in the lane, and the Hokies didn't get very many of those in the first half, but they've done a nice job here in the second half, scoring inside. Baycott working against Kidd, who plays with the three fouls. Armando all the way underneath for the basket. 10 now for Baycott. Nice quick move by Baycott. He felt that pressure and just went right around him. Yep, got five rebounds today, does the grad student from Richmond. There's hardly any out there to get. Here, Ingram's getting them all. Collins, Couture a three on the move. And it's out of bounds. Last touch by Kidd and Virginia Tech. Couture had a good look. Uh, he clapped his hands in frustration after that play, West, because he knew he had a good look. And Hunter Couture is shooting 50% from three in ACC play coming in. He's only one for four out there today. Withers. They're trying to bounce it to Baycott. There's the catch out of the double team and off the glass. 12 now for Armando Baycott on his fifth field goal. Boy, that is such a weapon, West. <laughs> I mean, you got a guy inside, you just throw the ball to him, be confident. He's going to score or get fouled. There's Kidd. Working against Baycott with a right hand, too strong. Ingram another rebound. Kid made a couple of pivots, Wes, and went away from the basket. Made it a tougher shot than I think original. Withers through traffic and one. Jalen Withers, second field goal of the game. Looked like he lost balance when he left the floor and somehow still got it up on the glass. Well, Collins did not do a very good job defensively there, Wes. You can't run at a guy who still has his dribble. And Withers did lose his balance, Wes, but what a nice job recovering. Baycott did a nice job screening inside for him as well. Fifth foul on Virginia Tech is the fourth on Lynn Kidd. And he'll have to go to the bench. The free throw by Withers. Round it out. Well, Wes, every time the Hokies make a little run, the Tar Heels have responded so far. Barron, Petit on the floor now. He plays with three fouls, as does Robbie Barron. Couture at 18 feet. Got it. Hunter Couture, just his second field goal. Seven now for the Orlando grad student. And that ball got kicked. It'll stay with Carolina down here to our left. And it looked like the Tar Heels were trying to get it inside to Baycott once again. Petit yeah. is in there with three fouls. Hokies are in an interesting little stretch here, Dan. They beat Florida State on Tuesday night, play Chapel Hill here today, home to Virginia on Monday night, and next Saturday at Pitt. There's a throw to Dur. And here's Davis a three. That bounced away, and it's going to be a foul on Withers as he and Barron both went to the floor. Okay, the Withers will draw his first. That's five on Carolina. Virginia Tech came in losing three of their last four. On the season, five of six road games. 
Well, Barron that time really made sure he blocked out Withers. Withers knocked him down trying to come over. That's the kind of aggressiveness on the offensive boards, though, West, that has been rewarded for the most part today for the Tar Heels. To tour, Poteet, and foul on Trimble's reach. Six on Carolina, second on Seth Trimble. And it's been a different story for Virginia Tech, Holman Road, as Elijah Poteet will go to the line. Dan, five and two in ACC play at the Castle, one and five on the road. It's hard to win on the road, Wes, and, well, and this league has the stats to prove it. <laughs> Coming into today, that's eight now for Petit. Home teams were just 60 and 41. That's under 60%. And now we did have a two-point game with Virginia and Wake Forest, but then 29% of the games have been five or less. And only five overtime games. We haven't had an overtime game in almost a month. We got five. Last one was January 24th in conference play. There's Baycott bounce withers and it banged out on the dunk. He was trying to throw that one down too hard, Wes. Yep. Nine point game and it's still nine. Long rebound. Padula try and cut it to six. Cannot. Hokies had two front door misses there. And here's a lead for Tremble. He'll drive and score. And you saw Petit just get out of the way, Wes. And I think that's what he had to do. The Hokies, you know, those were two wide open shots by two of their best three point shooters. Ingram and Ryan back to the table for Carolina. We're going to get a stop in the action, though, on the next dead ball. Here's Couture for Poteet. Boy, lowered the shoulder and drives home the field goal, fourth of the day. Poteet now in double figures for the third time against the league with 11. That was a situation, Wes, where Baycott hit him, too. They <laughs> A couple of guys running into one another. And there's Baycott on the basket and the foul against Barron, which will be his fourth. Six on Virginia Tech with 11.33 to go. And Armando Baycott now eight in the half, 14 in the ball game. Tar Heels at the line to extend their lead when we come back. True story. When two cats enter the jungle, it's going to get wild. As wild as over as we have been in a long, long time. How fun is this? It's the Wildcats. Kentucky is an outstanding team. Can he get a shot off? Yes. Yes. And the Tigers. Auburn is a national title contender. Only one will escape the W. This is going to be a battle. Experience number 22, Kentucky. Number 13, Auburn. Tonight at 6 on ESPN. You know. The competition's never been better. This is just spectacular. The stars have never been brighter. That's our move. Women's College Hoops on ESPN and ABC. This time belongs to those who want it most. The rivals. The statement makers. 70 points. 70? You want that shot? Oh, he puts it in! Take it. That stop. What a block! Make it. This time is where youth is tested and greats are challenged. The playoff push is coming. The time is now. The most passion, the most intensity. This is the way basketball is supposed to be. Get ready for the rush to the playoffs. The biggest games on the biggest stage. An outdoor hockey doubleheader at MetLife Stadium. The most intense playoffs in sports begin in April and culminate with the most revered trophy of all. The Stanley Cup Final returns to ABC and ESPN Plus this June. The most passion, the most intensity. This is the way basketball is supposed to be. Taking the tour, I'm wrecking the land. I keep it hardcore because it's dope, man. What better way to get the juices flowing and to get your adrenaline going? That's it, Jerome! I keep it hardcore like you never saw your one of these. This time 
belongs to those who want it most. Where youth is tested and greats are challenged. The playoff push is coming. The time. Well, if you followed ACC basketball for even a minute in your life, you know the impact that Charles G. Lefty Drizel had on ACC basketball, college basketball, and the game. A well-deserved Hall of Fame induction six years ago. 786 wins, 41 years as a head coach, one of two with 100 wins at four different schools. But Dan Bonner, Lefty Drizel, was a character, a legend. Wes, in this he, conference. he was a great coach. He was a great personality. He was a great character. And he was a wonderful person. And I mean, he was such an innovator. He invented Midnight Madness. Yep. And, uh, you know, what the, as fancy as it became, but he invented Midnight Madness. And he just, I mean, he just always had something to say. He took over Maryland at a point where a very proud Maryland program had fallen onto hard times. And they really got, he got them ramped up. Remember, they used to play Hail to the Chief when he came in the oh, building? Unbelievable. <laughs> There's the tour on the score. Not only Hail to the Chief, he just, and then and the, the peace symbol leaving the floor, the V for victory at the end of the games. And I mean, Lefty Drizel, Mar and of course, we're coming up on the 50th anniversary, one of the greatest games ever played, the greatest basketball game ever played in the history of this league. The 1974 championship game between NC State and Maryland, which will certainly celebrate in D.C., I'm sure, this year. And Lefty Drizel was a huge part of that, even to the point that he got on the team bus at the end of the night in Greensboro to tell NC State to go win the national championship because they felt they played their national championship game that night. We lose at 92, one of the great figures in all of basketball at any level and left to Giselle this morning. And our best to, to Joyce and his family who were just unbelievable assets in his long, remarkable career. Baycott's got 17. The lead is kind of holding in that 10 moment now for Carolina at 70 to 60. Now the Hokies keep fighting away, Wes. They just can't get stops. And there's Padula drawing a foul. <laughs> My fault, Joyce passed away. I, I beg your pardon, thank you. But our thoughts and prayers to Coach's family. Four fouls now on Baycott. Or I beg your pardon. The foul was on. As Padula knocks the free throw down. That is nine. Davis is fouled. I want to make sure I get that charter right. So two on R.J. Davis, still three on Armando Baycott as Padula hits the play. Right, it wasn't four fouls. The foul was on four. Foul was on four. Thanks. Good call. And Wes, suddenly we have an eight-point game again. Yep, here it is inside double figures. Kick out for Ryan. Three ball good. Cormac Ryan now with seven, 13 in the ball game. Again, great ball movement results in a great shot. And then with Car Heels. Are sensing a little bit of a hokey run, Wes. They've been able to convert. Padula answers, cannot. Rattled out on it. 14 only, rebounds for Ingram. That's only a good shot if it goes in the basket, Wes. Catch Baycott score. Oh, that's a good shot. Armando Baycott has got 13 in the half, Dan, 19 in the ball game. There's just nothing they can do with him inside with their guys in foul trouble. Timeout. Mike Young will take a pause here because it's Dan said it got inside of 10. Carolina's put two in a row from the floor on. Cormac Ryan, another three, his third of the day. The rush to the playoffs. The biggest games. The biggest stage. The Stanley Cup Final returns on ABC and ESPN+. Plus. True story. When two cats enter the jungle, it's going to get wild. It's the Wildcats and the Tigers. Only one will escape with a W. Experience number 22, Kentucky. Number 13, Auburn. Tonight at 6 on ESPN. The competition's never been better. This is just spectacular. The stars have never been brighter. That's our move. Women's College Hoops on ESPN and ABC. 
we have breaking news right now. So we wait to see how this plays out. In all my years, I never watched anything like this. You have got to watch this replay, folks. Da, 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 da. Mahomes. What a catch! Hey, you gotta watch this. I'm watching. Ooh. Oh, I'm watching. You might be just. Now on Sports Center, another wild night. Watch me, watch me, do this. This time belongs to those who want it most. The rivals. The statement makers. 70 points. 70? You want that shot? Oh, he it in. Take it. That stop? What a block. Make it. This time is where youth is tested. And greats are challenged. The playoff push is coming. The time is now. This time belongs to those who want it most. Where youth is tested. And greats are challenged. The playoff push is coming. The time is now. The most passion, the most intensity. This is the way basketball is supposed to be. Well, Armando Baycott, as we welcome you back to Virginia Tech, Carolina, it's part of Unity Week in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Now through next Saturday, and Armando Baycott has made a second half showcase tape, Dan. Well, see, he has been outstanding inside. He's five of six from the field. He's three of three from the free throw line. He's got an assist. He's got a couple of rebounds. And with Virginia Tech in foul trouble in the first half, he's just taken over in there. And as the Hokies try to mount a comeback, it's very difficult when North Carolina has a guy like Baycott who just makes it, something happen every time he touches the ball. Collins into traffic, feeds Poteet, and there's the fourth on Baycott, I think. No, it's going to be on Cadeau. And Cadeau reached in. You know, I, I think if I'm Elliot Cadeau in that situation, I just let Armando Baycott handle things. There's no reason to reach in like that. Here's Poteet to shoot two. 71% at the line. By the way, our crack staff, Dan, did yes. some work. When we got word about Lefty Drizelle this morning, we found a photo I want you to see here today. Look at this, the tall Virginia. Uh-oh. Yeah. We're going to get it. Two boys have got it. They promise. There it is. How's that? Huh? <laughs> ACC tournament's gone by. That's the old Greensboro Coliseum. You can tell because the lights around the rim of the ceiling, huh? I don't know. The tall Virginian had some hair in those days. <laughs> it's a different color than it is now. There's a lot more of it. You're distinguished. <laughs> it ties wide enough you can land a jet on, though. Here is Baycott inside again. Misses for just the second time in the half. Where did they come up with that? Oh, I don't know. know. I know, I know. I'll, you know. I'll get him tomorrow. <laughs> Will you? Free throw. A jump shot good for NJ Collins after Baycott just got one of two. Collins has got 14. Four in this half. The lead. Here we go again, Dan. Nine. And there's Cadeau answering on the layup. But every time Virginia Tech has cut into the lead, gotten it down below double figures, North Carolina has had an answer. Mike Young and his staff just kind of you work so hard to get it back to single digits and then you give it right back. There's Poteet. Elijah now with seven and a half, 15 in the ball. The Hokies are doing a much better job getting the ball inside in this half. They really struggled to do that in the first half. Now can they get a stop? Davis for Baycott. There's Ingram. Skip it for Ryan. Jaden Young closed out nicely. Ryan had it stripped away by Nickel, I think. But look at Cormack, and a foul going to be called on Young. So Jaden Young draws his first seven on Virginia Tech free throws for Cormac Ryan when we continue from Chapel Hill. The most passion, the most intensity. This is the way basketball is supposed to be. Taking the tour, I'm wrecking the land. I keep it hardcore because it's dope, man. What better way to get the juices flowing and to get your adrenaline going? Yes, it is, Jerome. I keep it hardcore. 
call like you never saw you wanna be. You wanna be. True story. When two cats enter the jungle, it's gonna get wild. It's the Wildcats and the Tigers. Only one will escape with a W. Experience number 22, Kentucky. Number 13, Auburn. Tonight at 6 on ESPN. True story. A trifecta of rivalry games can heat up the winner blues. This is gonna be a fight all night long. First, number four, Houston faces number eight, Kansas. There's nowhere better than Allen Fieldhouse, nowhere. Then it's round one of Duke, Carolina. The best rivalry in college basketball. And number five, Tennessee takes on number 10, Kentucky. Boy, if that doesn't get you going, I don't know what will. Experience the blockbuster triple header today on ESPN. We have breaking news right now, so we wait to see how this plays out. In all my years, I never watched anything like this. You have got to watch this replay, folks. Shut that, that, that. Mahomes. What a catch! Hey, you gotta watch this. I'm watching. Ooh. Oh, I'm watching. You might be just. Now on Sports Center, another wild night. Watch me. Watch me. Get ready for the rush to the playoffs. The biggest games on the biggest stage. An outdoor hockey doubleheader at MetLife Stadium. The most intense playoffs in sports begin in April and culminate with the most revered trophy of all. The Stanley Cup Final returns to ABC and ESPN Plus this June. The competition's never been better. This is just spectacular. The stars have never been brighter. That's our move. Women's College Hoops on ESPN and ABC. Well, because the NCAA committee cut loose their top 16 today, Dan, let's kind of get a look here, a fresh check of Carolina's resume. The net is solid. The quad ones are solid. The road games are solid. Committee says they're five overall as we begin play today. Well, which makes them uh, the number one, number two seed, if That's you will. It. Yep. Uh, the North Carolina has had a really good season, Wes. They, yeah, they, they really did work in the non-conference part of the schedule. They had that nine-game winning streak mm -hmm. in conference play. Front end of the one and one for Ryan Good. He's three for three. And I know they've tailed off a little bit here, Wes, but it's hard to maintain that kind of performance through a long stretch of a basketball season. Every basketball season has some ups and downs. Second from Cormac Ryan. And when, people, and when people think you're having a little bit of a downtime and you're still the number five overall seed yeah. for the NCAA tournament committee, then I think you've done a pretty good job. Four and double figures for Carolina. The lead returns to 11. Can the Hokies continue to score to hang in this thing? Collins trying to find something. Here's Poteet left it on the front rim. Ingram another rebound. Baycott's got three fouls. Poteet really needed to attack him, not just take that little soft shot that he's short on. Cado on the dribble, lost it with Collins defending and then commits the foul. Three on Cadeau, eight on Carolina. We'll give MJ Collins free throws down to our right. 7.25 to go. The, the interesting part about these two teams meeting today is their next game is against the same team. <laughs> Virginia on Monday night for the Hokies. Carolina next Saturday in Charlottesville. Of course, Mike Young's team lost by eight in Charlottesville in mid-January. And Virginia, a two-point winner today against Wake Forest. And, the early portion of the schedule on this Saturday. First free throw for Collins, who's 23 of 25 on the year. And knocks it down. Quick reminder to you tonight, 8.30. After the triple header concludes, nothing but net. The full house breaks down the day in the ACC. Highlights, analysis, interviews, and more. A look ahead to the coming week, including the Hokies and Wahoos on Monday night. Only one place to find it. Kelsey Riggs is in charge of that group, gentlemen. <laughs> Not you guys on ACC Network, streaming live on the ESPN app. A couple of free throws for Collins on the one and one. 
Back to a nine point Tar Heel advantage. The Hokies are 11 for 11 from the line in the second half. Ingram left the three on the rim. Couture the rebound. Here's Collins. I thought he was going to pull the trigger. <laughs> well, here they are, another chance to cut it to six, Dan. Kid with the left hand makes it seven instead. Seven and a half, nine in the game for Lynn Kidd. And the Hokies, closest the Hokies have been since late in the first half. They just won't go away. Double team coming, threw it into traffic, and finally Ryan collects. Davis trying to shake Nickel. All the way through, block Nickel, recovered Davis, scores. R.J. Davis is listed at six feet. And amongst the biggins. But another offensive rebound. Collins, runner with the right hand, bake out the rebound. Tremble on the outlet with Ingram ahead. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna drive the ball to the basket, you gotta attack Baycott, not try to float it up over him. He's got a couple of fouls. He's got three fouls. Maybe he'll back off. Davis trying to shake the screen, lost it, got it back. Ingram sets, banged around, slapped out. New twenty for another offensive rebound. So the Hokies West they cut it to seven, and then they had two chances to get the defensive rebound and they weren't able to do it. Davis fall away with three. Oh my heavens. 18 for Davis. How and about that basket that? the most dramatic of them. How about that? Coming up on five to play. Lead back to 12 on five in a row by Carolina. Couture. Lynn Kidd up and underscore. Well, that breaks that five, five in a row streak, Wes, but all five of those points were second chance points, and that's where North Carolina has dominated today. Davis all the way through. Offensive foul going to be called by Greg Evans on the baseline. R.J. Davis wrapped the arm, and I think that laid the groundwork for the whistle. Well, Davis, he takes a bump, and the shot clock's running down. And how about this? <laughs> Off that step back? That is some sort of a shot. And Virginia Tech now trying to cut into the double-figure deficit under five to go. And that's going to be on Cormac Ryan, third all of the half. By the way, in the process today, Armando Baycott has now passed Ronnie Shavlik for second in ACC history in career rebounds. You're getting up there in rarefied air now with Dickie Hemrick and Ronnie oh. Shavlik, aren't you? It's about as rare as the air gets in the Atlanta Coast Conference history. The history of this league, those are two names that are yeah. among the biggest. Ten for Couture. And Baycott, who plays today in his 158th game. Look at that. Ralph Sampson, who we saw the other night in Charlottesville, the great Tim Duncan. Ronnie Shout, one of the finest gentlemen, not just as a basketball player, but as a man and businessman and local leader in the Raleigh area later in life. And the great Dicky Hemmer. Well, here we go again, Wes. It's down under double figures. Baycott inside, got the roll. What a half for Baycott. And that's just, again, I'll say it. That's just such a weapon when you have a guy you can just throw him the ball and expect something good's going to happen. Back to 10 ahead of four minutes. Kid. Trying to wind down again. Skips it for Collins. Three over Trimble. Nine rebounds for Baycott, so he's one away from his 81st double-double. Double team again. One dribble, diagonal skip pass, and Collins got a hand on it. And MJ Collins is like, man, if I had just gotten a little more of that, I might have been able to go the other way. But half belongs to Baycott, Dan. Well, he's just been outstanding, Wes. And again, every time they need a basket, they go to him, and he produces. Ten-point lead. 
There's nothing better than a Subway Series footlong, except when you add an all-new footlong sidekick, like the $2 footlong churro covered in cinnamon sugar deliciousness, or the $3 footlong pretzel, salted and baked to perfection. Honey mustard shot. And let's not forget the $5 gooey footlong chocolate chip cookie. What's your favorite, Clay? You're my favorite sidekick. No, you're my favorite sidekick. We'll get back to him later. Every epic footlong deserves a perfect sidekick. This time belongs to those who want it most. The rivals. The statement makers. 70 points. 70? You want that shot? Oh, he puts it in! Take it. That stop? What a block! Make it. This time is where youth is tested and greats are challenged. The playoff push is coming. The time is now. We have breaking news right now, so we wait to see how this plays out. In all my years, I never watched anything like this. You have got to watch this replay, folks. Shut that, that, that. Mahomes. What a catch! Hey, you gotta watch this. I'm watching. Ooh. Oh, I'm watching. You might be done. Now on Sports Center, another wild night. Watch me, watch me do this. This time belongs to those who want it most, where youth is tested and greats are challenged. The playoff push is coming. The time is now. The competition's never been better. I never let do that. The stars have never been brighter. Kelly. Oh, that was pretty. It's Amor Magic. Some brewing tonight. There's no stopping us now. This is just spectacular. That's our move. Women's College Hoops on ESPN and ABC. The competition's never been better. This is just spectacular. The stars have never been brighter. That's our move. Women's College Hoops on ESPN. ACC basketball is presented by Food Lion, the official grocer of the Atlantic Coast Conference. And just a moment ago, Aaron Matson and the national champion North Carolina field hockey team honored here at Smith Center. Aaron Matson, pretty good. You go from winning <laughs> a handful on your own to coaching one, right? Right out of the game. One of the more amazing sports stories in the country. Absolutely, Wes. I mean, they win so many field hockey championships. There was a kid out there with a 2022 championship shirt on. Wow. There is a scoop miss on the underside. Ingram recovers. And a foul call on Virginia Tech, I believe. Greg Evans tickets Collins with his first and eight now on Virginia Tech. So one and one coming for, uh, no, two shots for Harrison Ingram, I think. Let me double check here with Pat Driscoll. Oh, one and one. It is one and one. He hasn't scored in this half. Wes. That is correct. Has now. A quick reminder after the ball game, we'll send you straight to Chestnut Hill. John Mita Perel, Malcolm Huckabee standing by Miami and Boston College. And then we'll close the night at the Pete. The Oakland Zoo will be at full throat after the win at Virginia, won't they? 6.30 tip time. Doug Sherman, Josh Pastner for Louisville and Pitt's second meeting of the year. And how about that Pitt team? How well they Ooh. play on the road. Yep. Jeff Capel's team in that group tied for fifth when the day started. The tour of the miss of the three. It's an 11-point game coming up on three minutes to play. And he can make those, West, but that was a contested shot. Again, nice defense by Cormac Ryan, who I think his defensive effort against Couture has been superb all day. Trimble thought about it, hits Baycott with a pass and score. Of course he did. Armando now continues his second half barrage, pushing the lead to 13. 17 and a half, and he's seven of nine from the floor. Collins has had a terrific day for Virginia Tech. 18 points for MJ Collins. 
Now the problem now for Virginia Tech is they're just trading baskets with North Carolina and obviously you can't do that when you're down by 11. Yep. Eight to shoot and Davis splits the double team and lost it. And last touch by Virginia Tech I believe is where that stands five to shoot. Pat Driscoll double checking with Greg Evans I think. Trumbull will put it in play. Ryan against Nickel and a rebound Petit. Got to push. Collins might have gotten away with a travel and Baycott blocks Poteet. What hasn't he done Wes? He adds the block. Baycott's a rebound away from the double double. I believe nope now he's got it. 13th double double of the year is the 81st of his career. That just means Morris set up a chart. <laughs> Ryan with five to shoot from Western North Carolina knocks it down. 16 for Cormac Ryan. Then he was standing about Brevard. <laughs> Here is Collins. And the rebound for Baycott with 80 seconds left. I think he was quite out to Murphy when he cut it loose. <laughs> Carolina going to go to 20 and 6 and 12 and 3. And keep the first place advantage. And R.J. Davis delivers to Baycott. 25 for Baycott. And he just stepped into the open spot, Wes. Nothing complicated about what he's doing. He's just doing it very well. Nickel missing on the three. And there's a three ball for Tyler Nickel. That's his fourth three of the day. He's got 14 in the ball game, and with 28 seconds left, R.J. Davis got to get in front court. That's how many times do you score 81 points and lose by a double figure? Right. Carolina got 94 today. Armando Baycott is going to finish with 25 and 11. He had 25 against Duke, 24 against Clemson. This will be his third, third 20 point game against the league this year, Dan. And Baycott simply, Wes, he steps in. He sees Poteet go to help out and just steps in behind him. And Davis got himself off the floor. So if Baycott doesn't do that, Davis is stuck. But that's a good smart play by Baycott. So R.J. Davis going to get a uh, free throw opportunity here. One and one. Davis has got 19 or 18 rather. Now he has 19. And the double double number for Baycott. Three behind Ralph. Six to tie. Tim Duncan. Again, a that's, distinguished list. That's a pretty good list. Oh my God. And I, and I know some of you are going, well, wait a second, he's played 158 games. I get it. I understand. Who cares? The records are the records, right? 20 seconds left. Virginia Tech. We'll try and get home to Blacksburg for a quick Monday night turnaround against Virginia and a wedgie with 12.9 left. We'll keep it with the Hokies. Carolina, meanwhile, gets the week off before going to John Paul Jones Arena, Dan. What sets up to be a very interesting game next Saturday in Charlottesville, doesn't it? Well, very interesting game next Saturday in Charlottesville and a very interesting game on Monday with Virginia Tech against Virginia. Yep. How in the world did Virginia win that game today going one for 11 from the free throw? That is the statistical anomaly that will be examined by the basketball purists tonight. Carolina, meanwhile, goes to 11 and 1 at home, 6 and 1. Here in this.